Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at the Tropic Fuel Shell Backpack, which is a very interesting one bag travel system. Pretty recently we actually took a look at some of the company's travel shoes, their Canyon shoes and their Sunset shoes, which are really versatile and comfortable and are going to make it easier to travel with less shoes overall. And so it's exciting to see the company continue to grow its travel gear ecosystem with the Shell Backpack and a variety of accessories that make this a very versatile and interesting just overall system. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about my experience testing this out over the past couple of weeks. I'm gonna walk through how I've loaded it out, show you all the accessories. But before jumping into the video, if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Danny and on this channel, we love reviewing popular travel and everyday carry gear. If you like these types of videos and you'd be interested in seeing more, please consider subscribing as it helps the channel out a lot. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump in. Starting off with the outside of the bag, this definitely has a pretty interesting aesthetic. It's kind of a mixture of modern and classic. So closer to the top, since this is a top loading bag, you have these traditional strap and buckle style systems that we've seen in a lot of other bags that we featured on the channel, such as the Shadow Guide 33. And to me, that's an aesthetic that feels like it's been around for a long time and is gonna be kind of timeless and that you're gonna be able to use it for many years to come. But then as you move towards the bottom, you have more of a modern touch, particularly with the magnetic fidlock buckles that are included on the exterior. Just gives it a little bit more of a futuristic and techy vibe along with the modular accessories that you can pair with this that we'll take a closer look at later in the video. And the aesthetic works pretty well in my opinion. It's gonna be versatile enough to take into the outdoors, to travel while not looking too much like a travel backpack, but it's still gonna be minimal enough to be able to take into the office. And then for the materials on the exterior, you have a recycled nylon fabric that feels like it's gonna hold up pretty well to rougher usage. It's also fairly lightweight. It doesn't have the highest level of weather resistance. It doesn't feel like X-Pack or some of the ballistic nylon that we've seen in other bags, but for the most part, it feels like it's gonna hold up pretty well. And then you also have some well-protected YKK zippers all throughout. Continuing along the outside, you have two external water bottle pockets, one on each side, and these offer a decent amount of space. Currently what I have here is the same 20 ounce water bottle that you've seen in a lot of my other travel and daily bag videos, and that fit in there pretty comfortably. The compartment offers a nice amount of elasticity. So if you have a thicker water bottle, it should be able to fit in here okay. One thing to note, however, is that when this main compartment starts to get really packed out, it can be tougher to squeeze something thicker into this area. So something to keep in mind as you're organizing your bag. But again, I like the elasticity and it's nice that when you're not using the pockets, they hug the bag really nicely to maintain a cleaner overall look. As far as branding, the bag keeps things pretty simple. You just have the Tropic Feel logo on the top flap of the bag. And then on the side and the top, you have some really simple handles that are gonna allow you to carry this like a briefcase or to help place this into an overhead storage compartment. The implementation here leaves a little bit to be desired, especially considering the higher price of the bag. The handles are pretty thin. They don't have much in the way of padding. So I could see this start to dig into my fingers when it's a little bit more packed out or while I'm holding it for a longer period of time. Moving into the capacity, the bag has an adjustable volume that starts at 22 liters at its smallest, and that's gonna be a great EDC backpack size for holding all of your essentials. It then expands to 30 liters if you have to carry a little bit more with you on your day-to-day -day or for more of a weekend trip, and then you can expand it all the way up to 40 liters for a little bit of longer-term travel. And it's nice that you have so many different ways that you can configure the bag. And even when it's at its most expanded, although it starts to get a little bit bulky and tall, I still feel like it's gonna work pretty well to carrying on to many domestic and international airlines. Taking a look at the straps and the back paneling, so far the bag has been pretty comfortable to wear. On the straps, you have a padding that's a little bit thinner than I would have expected considering how big and heavy this bag can get. This works pretty well while you're using this as an EDC bag, but once you expand it out and it's fully packed out, I did notice a little bit of fatigue start to set in. On the inside, you also don't have that meshy material to help prevent moisture from building up, but the straps do have a nice width to help prevent the bag from digging into your shoulders when it's a little bit more packed out. On the straps, you also have load lifters that are gonna allow you to configure how the bag sits on your shoulders a little bit more, and you have an adjustable and removable sternum strap to help distribute the weight. Moving towards the bottom of the bag, you have an included waist belt, and this does have a little bit of padding to help add some comfort and support. The waist belt is also integrated into the back paneling in a way that feels like it can help distribute some of that weight off of your shoulders. However, I wasn't super crazy about the implementation here. 
I do wish that this padding had been a little bit longer and thicker to just give you more comfort. And then I also don't like that you can't fully remove the waist belt. You can tuck it away if you don't wanna use it while you're carrying the bag as an EDC backpack, but to me, this is always a little bit more cumbersome than it's worth, and I actually prefer to be able to fully remove the waist belt as I normally just don't like to use them. Taking a look at the back paneling, this has actually been quite comfortable. The padding that's included here is much softer than the one that was used on the straps. It actually has kind of a gel-like feeling, which has felt really nice when the bag has been a little bit more packed out. And then I like that this padding is also elevated to create this air channel to provide you with some nice ventilation while you're walking around for a longer period of time. A few final notes while we're on the back paneling. First up, you have this strap that you can hide behind the back paneling and you can release it whenever you want to tuck the straps away. You can't actually release the straps and hide them like you can with some other travel bags. But what you can do is actually just use this strap to keep them in place. If you need to check your bag or put it into an overhead storage compartment, this will help prevent them from just kind of flopping around. And then the other thing I wanted to call out in this area is that you have a hidden zippered compartment that's gonna be great for storing something like your phone, a passport, or a wallet. You have a decent amount of space here. You won't wanna put anything too thick as it might create some bulging against your back. But for flatter and more sensitive items, this is gonna be a great hidden area to keep them a little bit more protected from pickpockets. Jumping into the organizational options, on its own, the bag actually keeps things really simple. At the top flap, you have one quick access pocket that has a very well-protected zipper. You can see it's aqua guarded and it has a zipper garage. Before jumping into the pocket, one thing I'll call out is when you start to pack out the main area of this bag a lot and you expand it up, you can see that it's a little bit tricky to use this compartment. It starts to kind of share volume and it can be difficult to take full advantage of the space offered in the flap. But even with that being the case, I was able to fit the items that I would normally wanna reach a little bit more quickly in this compartment. So I put in a deck of playing cards. I also have my lightning cable and power brick to charge my iPad and my phone. And then I also tossed in my Ray-Ban sunglasses with their case. So it was nice to see that it could still hold some bulkier items. This might also be a great spot to toss my phone and my wallet while going through TSA. No sort of internal organization here, but still just a nice, simple area to be able to grab things quickly. And then at the bottom of the bag, you have an additional zipper where you can store a kangaroo style pouch that comes out when you want to expand the bottom of the bag by six liters. And I really like this idea. It's something I wish you would see in more travel bags as it actually provides you a decent amount of space for anything bulkier that doesn't fit into the main compartment. This is probably gonna be used by most people to store a pair of shoes. It fits you know, the Tropic Feel shoes that we featured on the channel quite nicely. A variety of styles fit easily and I like that it's actually outside of the bag so if your shoes are dirty or smelly, it's not gonna affect any of your clothes on the inside. I think this is a good alternative to the traditional shoe compartments and bags that actually go inside and take up space. And in order to use this, you actually have these G hooks that attach to these loops on the bottom. So it's very simple to close this up. It feels very secure. And then when you're walking around, you can have your shoes in here or other accessories. This area is a little bit exposed, so I wouldn't put any sort of tech in here necessarily, but just really love this overall idea to give you six additional liters of space. And then it's great that you can tuck it away when you don't wanna use it. And then if you would like to add some extra organization to the outside of the bag, Tropic Feel has created a few modular accessories that are gonna pair with these magnetic Fidlock connectors on the front. And so they have a toiletry bag and a tech pouch. Before jumping into the pouches themselves, I did wanna call out this Fidlock system that they've used here. It's one of the best that I've seen. I really like the pull tabs here. It makes it very easy to release the pouches whenever you wanna get them off, but they still feel very secure and like they're not gonna fall off when you're walking around. These pouches are sold separately from the bag. So if you just buy the bag and the wardrobe, this is kind of how it's gonna look. And then you can purchase the extra pouches if you want to be able to have some more options. One thing that I thought was a little bit interesting about this system is that the whole philosophy of having these connectors is that you don't have to place the pouches on the inside of the bag. So it saves space there. But if you wanna use both pouches, you can't. You have to pick and choose which one you wanna have with you. So if you're traveling, and you have a lot of toiletries or your liquids here and you want, want to be able to get them out easily, you should place this one on the exterior. I have the tech pouch on the inside of the bag and then you can kind of swap them around. So it might've been nice to see an extra set of Fidlock buckles or a different way to allow you to configure multiple pouches as one. Regardless, it's still nice to have the flexibility provided by this modular system. 
And then diving into the pouches themselves, first up we're going to take a look at the toiletry bag, which has a very simple layout and I like how slim it is. Even when I put my stuff in there, it never gets super bulky. It has a well protected zipper that goes all the way around along with those zipper poles that I really like. The material feels very weather resistant, so if something happens to leak, it doesn't feel like it's going to spread out too easily. And then this opens up very flat, which works nicely with the included hook, so you can actually hang this up in your bathroom and be able to access anything in the toiletry bag very easily. So on the back, you have a few elastic slip pockets that are gonna be great for holding larger and bulkier accessories. So in one of them, I just have a deodorant. And on the front of that, I didn't include anything just because when these compartments are on top of each other, it's always tough to take full advantage of both of them. And on the one on the left, in the back compartment, I tossed in the little manicure set that I like to carry with me. And then on the front compartment, I just have a travel size bit of floss. And then at the bottom, you have a very well sealed zippered compartment. This is where I would put liquids that I have to carry with me. In my case, I just tossed in a bunch of smaller accessories that, you know, just are floating around on the inside. So I have a comb that folds and tucks away easily. I have a razor so that I can shave. I tossed in a little zippered pouch that has some medicines and extra contacts. And then I tossed in my shaving cream. And let me see, is there anything else? I also tossed in a little bit of pomade. And even with those items in there, there was still plenty of leftover space in this compartment. So just a great simple layout and a adopt kit that I would be glad to use even if I wasn't carrying this actual backpack. And then the other pouch that the company has is a very simple tech pouch. So it has a similar aesthetic to the toiletry bag, but it's a little bit slimmer. It's not gonna be able to hold quite as much stuff. I like that it also has that well-protected zipper, especially if you have sensitive tech items in here. And there's not a lot of internal organization. This is just a simple pouch where you could toss in some chargers or power banks. That's what I currently have in here is my Blue Pop portable Bluetooth speaker and power bank. And then I just have some items kind of floating around here. I have a little tablet stand. And I like that this does offer enough volume for a laptop charger or maybe something like a GoPro because of its simple layout. But you know, it does feel like you could maybe have used at least one additional slip pocket. On the back, you have some bands that are gonna allow you to hold slimmer items and be able to reach them easily. So these are pretty slim and because of the height of these bands, it was a little bit tricky to figure out what types of items could actually fit without interfering with the top zipper. So ultimately I landed on using this for some of my EDC items. So I have a little flashlight that I like to carry with me and every man click pen. And then in this larger band in the middle, I had a pair of wired headphones that I like to have for whenever my Bluetooth headphones run out. And that fit in there, but it kind of fell down. It wasn't held too securely by this band. This might also be a good spot for some AirPods. I believe that's what they have on the company site. And then I also have this little lightning adapter that allows me to plug in an HDMI to my phone. So very simple overall, just these bands have enough elasticity to allow you to place something a little bit thicker. And you know, even though I'm not one that needs a ton of compartments to hold all my stuff, I do wish that a little bit more had been included. Regardless, it's nice how slim this is and that it's easy to toss inside of the bag when you're not using it or when you have the toiletry bag on the outside so that it doesn't take up too much space. Moving into the main compartment, you can access this both from the top and as a clamshell style bag. Starting with this top loading mechanism, you have the two adjustable buckles that I've mentioned a few times during the video. And this adjustability is really what allows you to use this as a daily bag or as a travel bag. So you can control the expansion and the volume from here. You can also secure the top down. And this system is always a little bit tricky as far as weather resistance, in my opinion, especially when you start to expand this out all the way up. You have to be very careful that you don't leave any gaps here at the top where water might sneak in. I was able to tuck everything away pretty comfortably. I felt secure about the system. And then it's really easy to open this up. You just have some simple plastic clips. Whenever you wanna reach something from the top, especially if you've packed this out completely, this is gonna be where you might wanna grab your headphones or a jacket or something like that. So you can see just how much extra space is offered here when it's at its fullest capacity. And so really nice to have this adjustable volume, but a lot of the time, the way that I prefer to access the bag is of course clamshell style. So it has this zipper on the back, very well protected zipper that's also lockable. You can put a cable lock in here to give you a little bit more peace of mind while you're traveling. And then this opens up to give you more access to everything that you have packed inside of the bag. So starting on the back, 
you actually have a laptop and tech area with a few simple compartments. I like the implementation on these pockets because it's pretty elastic. You can see some of the items that I have in here kind of bulging out. So first up, you have a slimmer compartment at the top. This is gonna be great for smaller items such as cables. I have this little multi-port connector and then I also have my Apple Magic Mouse and that and I like the amount of volume that's provided here again because of the elasticity it just kind of molds around what you place in here and then below that you have a bigger compartment that's going to be great for holding your laptop charger so I have the cable and power brick for my laptop this might also be a good spot to put something like a Kindle or a notebook it doesn't have a lot of padding but it is a pretty soft material so it should be good for preventing scratches and then as far as the laptop sleeve, you have this Velcro flap that's gonna help keep the device in place while you have the bag completely open. And this is gonna hold up to a 15 or 16 inch laptop pretty comfortably. Currently I have my 13 inch MacBook Pro. You can see that's kind of swallowed up by the compartment. And this sleeve has some padding. It's a little bit thinner than I would like to see. And the compartment isn't really suspended off the bottom of the ground. It does have some padding, but it would have been nice to see it pull up a little bit more to give you some peace of mind when placing the bag down. And then pulling my device out. Now with the compartment empty, you can get a better look at the inside. It doesn't really have any sort of fleece lining, but the nylon that's on the inside is pretty soft, so it doesn't feel like your device is gonna scratch too easily. And it also comes up enough to be able to hold a thicker device if that's what you happen to have. So even though it's not as suspended or padded as I would have liked, it still feels like my device is gonna be pretty well protected while I'm moving around throughout my day. And then moving to the main storage area of the bag, it has a very simple layout. It's just a big bucket of space, as many of the travel bags that I enjoy using are. And here we have what is definitely my favorite accessory from the collection. This is the wardrobe accessory that's actually included with the bag when you purchase it. This alone adds a ton of value and may make it a much more appealing bag. It's just a very incredible system that really allows you to easily organize and compress all of the clothes that you take with you on a trip. On Tropic Feel site, they describe this as having your very own closet. And in my testing so far, that has been pretty accurate. I've used systems like these in the past that weren't nearly as well implemented. The clothes were all kind of falling out of the bag. The organization didn't really work that well. So I really like what they've done here as far as the organizational options and space provided and then the compression system. And so for this accessory, you can't actually purchase it on its own, which I was a little bit sad to see. Uh, but it is designed to fit perfectly into the shell backpack. And so you can arrive at your destination, take this out, and you actually have the ability to hang it up. So at the top, you have this adjustable strap that has a plastic G-hook that's gonna give you a lot of flexibility where, with where you can actually store this. And then on the side, you have the compression straps that allow you to really tighten this down and save a lot of space. I was actually surprised with how much I was able to place into the different sections of this wardrobe organizer. So the compression system here works well. You can see just how much it actually managed to compress all of my clothes down. I also like that this helps keep everything in place. Even though these compartments are open, nothing fell out while I was getting the wardrobe out of the bag. And I've really packed this out with a lot of clothes. And as you saw, I had a little bit of trouble getting it out of the shell backpack. So putting any more than this might be a little bit tricky to use, but with the clothes that I have here, I think I could definitely travel for a week, maybe longer, especially doing laundry. And so you have three sections to this wardrobe organizer. The one at the bottom has internal dividers that we'll take a look at. And then you have just kind of a larger open area for pants and jeans. And then at the top, you have two segmented zipper areas with a meshy compartments you can see on the inside. It's also gonna help it breathe. And so starting from the top, you have a zipper that's gonna allow you to access each side so you can separate items out. And this is really my favorite thing about it is just the organization makes it very easy to grab whatever you need, especially while this is hanging up. This is potentially a better system than a packing cube. I'm still testing it out. I'll have to go back and forth over a few trips, but I really, really love the idea behind this. Uh, and so on one side, I just put a bunch of t-shirts rolled up. I think I got four in here, which is more than, than I probably need, especially when traveling with something like Merino. I have my Outlier shirt, Oliver shirts. And then on the other side, I put four more t-shirts 
Again, just a mixture of different shirts from Western Rise, Bluff Works, and I have just t-shirts in here with which are cotton. Some of these are a little bit bulkier to fill them out, but these, these are gonna be able to hold maybe some dress shirts, polo shirts, depending on how you fold everything. You have this divider in the middle here, which you know is nice for segmenting everything. It would be kind of nice if you could collapse this divider if you wanted to take full advantage of the space. But regardless, it's got some elasticity, so you're not completely forced to use the volume in a particular way. And then in this middle section, you have just a big open space for pants and shorts in particular. So that's what I tossed in here. I think I have four or five pairs of pants. This is a pair of shorts. And then I have a variety of chinos in here. I have the Western Rise Division pants. And then I also have the Outlier Slim Dungarees and the Bluff Works Departure Jean 2.0. So a nice variety of pants there. More than the number of pants that I would probably need to travel with normally, particularly with those types of materials. And then on the inside, you can see no sort of internal dividers here or anything like that. Just another mesh wall to prevent items from falling outside of the back. And then at the bottom, you have a variety of dividers here uh, for storing either t-shirts or in my case, I use this as my underwear and socks area. I think I tossed in like seven or eight pairs of underwear and socks. And because of the dividers, it's very easy to reach. If I wanna grab some socks, I can grab them easily. I have my underwear here. I doubled up in this compartment. You have a variety of sizes. They're not all the same size. So you can kind of mix and match how you store everything. It was interesting to experiment with it. I'm sure I'll pack this out differently the next time that I use it. And then like the compartment at the top, the dividers here are fairly flexible. So you have a little bit of give depending on how you want to store and then you have some larger ones on the side i have a pair of shorts here these are some that i like to sleep with or i could you know store a pair of swim trunks in here so a ton of flexibility with the compartments offered just underwear socks anything that i might need and then at the top and bottom of the wardrobe you these are actually a little bit more rigid to give you some support and prevent everything from collapsing in and becoming too wrinkly so just a very very well thought out accessory and so with this main area empty, you can see no sort of internal organization or compression straps. And if you still prefer to use packing cubes instead of the wardrobe organizer, it's gonna work well for that type of organization. You really have a lot of flexibility with how you can organize everything. And then if I wanted to use this as a day-to-day -day bag, I would just toss in my Levitate portable standing desk and notebook, some headphones, maybe the tech pouches and my laptop, and I'd be good to go. I could adjust the capacity down with the straps on the front. And then one additional accessory that Tropic Feel has created for, for this system is the camera cube, which offers a ton of weather resistance. This almost feels like more of a camera bag because it has the handle at the top and you can connect an included shoulder strap to this so that you can wear it. Uh, and it offers a lot of weather resistance. On the outside, it has one zippered compartment for smaller accessories. And then on the inside, it has a pretty standard camera cube layout with adjustable dividers that are gonna keep your stuff protected and easy to access. You can open up the camera cube from the side or from the top, depending on how you wanna reach everything and how you have the bag organized. So just a really nice ecosystem of accessories overall. And I really love the amount of space and flexibility offered in this main compartment. I like the modular accessories that have been created. And although I think there's some room for improvement in how those accessories are organized and in some areas such as the laptop compartment and the shoulder straps, I think this is a solid bag. And if you're looking for something with a classic aesthetic that's gonna work well for your day to day or for traveling, then this is gonna be a good option to check out. And so to wrap up, it's been a pretty good experience testing out the Shell backpack and its accessories over the past couple of weeks. And you can currently purchase this on the company site starting at about $299 for the backpack and the wardrobe accessory that we featured in the video. They also have a variety of packages depending on how many accessories you wanna buy. I feel like this is gonna be a tough bag to buy without at least one of the pouch accessories to place on the front. So chances are it's gonna cost north of $300, which to me feels a little bit expensive. The bag does have a lot of interesting features and it's well built, but there's gonna be a lot of other great bags in this price range that may be worth considering. And so as I was testing this out, the first bag this made me think of is the Tom Bin Shadow Guide, which is a really durable and simple travel backpack. It's offered in a 33 liter size and a 23 liter size, which is a little bit better for EDC. 
And that bag has an extremely simple layout. It just has kind of one big bucket main compartment which can hold a ton of stuff. It doesn't have the ability to open clamshell like this one. It just has a few simple organizational pockets, laptop sleeve, and like this bag with Tom Bin, you have a very vast ecosystem of accessories that you can use to further customize the bag. That is also a very solidly built bag. It really feels like it's gonna hold up well over the longer term and comes in at a little bit of a higher price range. It's made in the US, and if you're looking for a bag that has this type of aesthetic that's gonna be a little bit simpler and that's gonna hold up for a long time, then that's gonna be a great option to check out. The next bag this made me think of is the Knack Pack Series 2, which is another bag that's really trying to offer a one bag travel solution for EDC for longer term travel. And to me, the Series 2 is one of the bags that does it best. I absolutely love the expansion system that's built into that bag. It expands up to 34, 35 liters. You can compress it down to 20 liters. It's just a really versatile bag. It's one of my favorite expandable options as it works particularly well for EDC. It's organizational layout is very easy to use. It has a lot of options, a laptop compartment, and when you expand it out, you can really travel for quite a bit of time with that bag. So it has a different kind of overall philosophy to this. It doesn't have accessories necessarily. It has the expansion and organization built right into the bag. It also has a little bit more of a professional aesthetic. So if you're looking for something that can expand and compress and work for pretty much anything that you need it to, that's gonna be one of the best options to keep in mind. The next bag this made me think of is the Wandered Provoke, which is one of my favorite camera backpacks. I've been using that for a few years now. I recently tested out the updated version. I really love some of the changes that were made to that bag. And that's always been one of my go-tos whenever I have to have any sort of camera gear with me. It has a quick access side pocket, an excellent camera cube. Everything integrates very nicely when you have to carry camera gear. It's also a very weather resistant bag. It has a roll top opening, which like this is expandable, but I feel like it's gonna offer a little bit better weather resistance as you can really tighten it down. It opens up clamshell style like this one to access the laptop area and your camera gear. Provides a nice organizational layout. It's pretty simple. And you know, if you're somebody who likes this style of bag, who wants the versatility of an expandable bag, but that's gonna want a little bit more weather resistance, or you need to carry some heavy duty camera gear, then that's gonna be one of the best options to take a look at. And then the last option that I'll mention here is the Able Carry Max, which has been one of my favorite minimal travel bags to come out over the past year. It's just fantastically built. I really love the minimal and techy aesthetic that it has. It has a clamshell style opening a nice organizational layout, plenty of protection for all of your tech, lots of weather resistance. That one's gonna come in in a similar price range to this, you know, close to $300. So it's a pricey bag, but you get a lot of value for your money. It's super comfortable. It's not gonna have the ability to expand and compress like this bag here, but at 30 liters, it's a versatile size that's gonna allow you to hold a lot of stuff for when you wanna travel, but it's not unusable as an EDC backpack, particularly if you're a little bit larger or you have more stuff to carry with you on your day to day. So if you're looking for a premium style EDC bag, that's gonna offer maybe a little bit more weather resistance and a more traditional kind of packing layout with the clamshell style opening, then that's gonna be one of the best options that you can check out. With that being said, although I think the price on this is a little bit high, it still holds up pretty well against the bags that I just mentioned. And if you're looking for a flexible and comfortable travel backpack that can work for EDC and that's gonna have an ecosystem of really unique accessories, this is still gonna be a good option to consider. And I'm definitely curious to hear what you guys think of the Shell backpack and its accessories and how this compares to other popular bags that we've featured on the channel in the past. And if there are any similar options that you think I should check out, as always, please let me know in the comments. And I wanna thank the company again for sending the bag for me to test out and to you guys for watching and supporting the channel. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos and we'll see you in the next one.